So uh, what we'll do is, we'll try to identify the important sulci and gyri present on superlateral surface. First, let's begin with the sulci and gyri seen on the frontal lobe, right? So what is this sulcus again? Yes. How will you confirm that this is central sulcus? Again, look at, look at it from the medial surface. Any sulcus that begins in front of the upturned end of cingulate sulcus and cuts the superomedial margin, that should be your central sulcus. Done. Fine? So there is no doubt in that. So again, uh, let's uh, identify the uh, central sulcus first. This is the central sulcus. In front of the central sulcus, parallelly you can see one more sulcus, right? Fine? This is your pre-central sulcus. Fine? Okay, now what we'll do is, we'll just try to draw it uh, uh, as we identify it. Okay? The entire cerebral hemisphere. One centimeter behind the frontal pole, you have the central sulcus. Exactly in front of that, what you have is precentral sulcus. This is what you need to do for your exam. If we have to identify, this is the precentral sulcus. The elevated area between the two is what is this? Precentral pre gyrus. Let's not get into functional areas right now. We'll just focus on identifying the sulci and gyri. This is the first sulci and gyri we identified on the frontal lobe. Then, can you see this horizontal sulcus? This is one. And then there is one more horizontal sulcus. If I have to draw it, beginning from the precentral sulcus. Okay? So this is the central sulcus. This is the precentral sulcus. Arising from the precentral sulcus, the two sulci you have, these are superior frontal sulcus and inferior frontal sulcus. Fine? That's what we identified here. Superior frontal sulcus and then inferior frontal sulcus. The area in between these sulci is referred to as superior frontal gyrus, middle frontal gyrus, and inferior frontal gyrus. Done? This is precentral gyrus. This is superior frontal gyrus. Middle frontal gyrus. Inferior frontal gyrus. Fine? In the inferior frontal gyrus, what is this point? Sylvian point, right? We have two sulci, right? Horizontal and then ascending. If you identify it, here, this is the anterior horizontal, this is the anterior ascending. In the inferior frontal gyrus, part of the superlateral surface that is in front of, what ramus is this? Anterior horizontal. This area is referred to as pars orbitalis. Then area between anterior horizontal ramus and anterior ascending ramus, this is referred to as pars triangularis. The posterior area, this is referred to as pars opercularis. This is the pars orbitalis, this is pars triangularis, and this is pars opercularis. Fine? Uh, one we, once we discuss functional areas, you will know that pars triangularis and opercularis form your Broca's speech area or motor speech area. Fine? Is this clear? These are the sulci and gyri you need to describe in frontal lobe. So, how many sulci and gyri are present in frontal lobe? One precentral sulcus, superior frontal and inferior frontal sulcus. These are the three main sulcus, and there are four main gyrus. They are precentral, superior frontal, middle frontal, and inferior frontal. In the inferior frontal gyrus, you will have two small sulci and three small gyri. The two sulci are anterior horizontal, anterior ascending. The two rami, I'm sorry, the three gyri are pars orbitalis, pars triangularis, and pars opercularis. Done? This is regarding 
the sulcaine gyre present and frontal. Done? Now let's focus on the parietal. Uh, again, let's begin with identifying this sulcus. What is this? Central sulcus. Central sulcus. Right? Again, parallel to central sulcus, can you see one more sulcus running? This is referred to as post-central sulcus. And the area between the two is referred to as post-central gyrus. All you need to do is, you just need to draw one vertical sulcus. This is the post-central gyrus. And this is post-central sulcus. Done? Next, arising from the post-central gyrus, you will have a horizontal sulcus. What do you call this? Intraparietal sulcus. Fine? Now again, let's see if we can identify it. Again, what is this sulcus? Post-central sulcus. Can you identify this horizontal thing? Horizontal sulcus. This is your intraparietal sulcus, which divides the entire parietal lobe into superior parietal lobule and inferior parietal lobule. Right? Inferior parietal lobule has few important gyri. Now, let's try to identify them. Okay? Uh, can you tell me what is this? Posterior, Posterior, Posterior ramus of lateral sulcus. Very good. Can you see it? Uh, it has an upturned end. And there is a U-shaped gyrus surrounding it. This is referred to as supramarginal gyrus. Fine? If I have to show it in diagram, if we just run, run it upwards, this is the upturned end. Then this is your supramarginal gyrus. Fine? Similar to that, in the temporal lobe, you will have the superior temporal sulcus. Surrounding that, you will have one more U-shaped gyrus. This is referred to as angular gyrus. These two areas will form your uh, sensory speech areas. Fine? We'll discuss later. So, let's try to identify these two. We have identified posterior ramus and we have identified supramarginal gyrus. This is the superior temporal sulcus. Again, if we just trace it upwards, you can see this, right? This is your angular gyrus. As I said, angular gyrus and supramarginal gyrus is seen in which part of the parietal lobe? Inferior, Inferior parietal lobe. This is all you need to know. Done? Post-central sulcus, post-central gyrus, intraparietal sulcus, superior parietal lobule, inferior parietal lobule, then we have angular gyrus, and then the supramarginal gyrus. This is regarding parietal lobe. Done? Now, what happens with your occipital lobe is, your occipital lobe will have uh, three important sulci. Okay? Now, these are uh, transfer sulcus, lateral sulcus, and lunate sulcus. Fine? Now, uh, transfer sulcus usually cuts the occipital lobe from the superomedial margin, and lateral surface, I'm sorry, lateral sulcus is a horizontal sulcus. Fine? Can you identify uh, one sulci here? Fine? Now, this should extend onto the superomedial margin. And this should be your transverse sulcus. Fine? And then coming from that, that should be the lateral sulcus. Fine? So usually what happens is, uh, if you have the parieto-occipital uh, sulcus here as the boundary, the transverse occipital sulcus runs like this. And lateral occipital sulcus runs like this. Okay? And most posterior part, you will have a U-shaped sulcus, and that is lunate sulcus. But here, it is not uh, exactly like the arrangement that is described in your book. The vertical sulcus, you can take as uh, the transfer sulcus, and this as the lateral sulcus. And let's see if we can identify this U-shaped sulcus. If you observe close to the occipital pole, Can you identify this? Fine. 
Um, is it looking like the tip of an arrow? Um, cutting it is one sulcus here, right? And then there is one sulcus which is running like this. Uh, it exactly looks like the arrow shape, right? This is your lunate sulcus. And what you see here, this is the posterior end of calcarine sulcus. Fine. Now, this is the area where you will get your uh, primary visual area and visual association area. But remember this, once you identify a arch-shaped or semilunar shaped sulcus, that is lunate sulcus, to confirm that, it should always be bisected by a uh, sulcus uh, coming from the medial surface, that is calcarine sulcus. Fine? So these are the areas that you need to identify in the occipital lobe. Done? Then, lastly, in the temporal lobe, the temporal lobe is bounded between the infero, lateral margin and posterior ramus of lateral sulcus. It has two important sulci and three important gyri. Okay? These are superior frontal sulcus, I'm sorry, superior temporal sulcus and inferior temporal sulcus separating three gyruses, superior middle and inferior temporal gyrus. Okay? This is the superior frontal, I'm sorry, superior temporal gyrus. This is the middle temporal gyrus, sorry, sulcus. So we have uh, superior temporal gyrus, middle temporal gyrus, and inferior temporal gyrus. Okay? So this is how we divide or classify the sulcus and gyri present on the superior lateral surface.